Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Folks, we're going to look at today at, at example E424, and also detailed with reinforcing pad and weld sizing. And uh, this is part of the ASME PT, PTB4 manual, and uh, which is Section 8, Division 1. So in each example, we will go, like we said, through the details of Division 1 for this particular example, and we'll reference the sections. Followed by, we'll look at the, the code case 2695, which allows uh, the designer as an option to use Section 8, Division 2, Part 4 rules. Part 5 rules uh, is by, by analysis, and that's not allowed. But the part four uh, designed by rules is, is allowed to be used as an equivalent for the code calculations provided uh, that you check with your local authority. And there's some rules about how to state that when you submit the calculations. OK, as we said before, there are two methods, method one and method two. Let's dive into method one which is the, the traditional Section 8, Division 1 method. OK, so we're going to continue on here with method 1. And uh, this is the area we're going to look at. We're going to look at that Category D weld as by definition in Section 8, Division 1. And you'll find that these categories are identical uh, used in Division 2. When you read Division 2, you'll, uh, if you're ever stuck on Division 1, take a look at Division 2. Sometimes it explains a little bit better. I, I find that Division 2 is, is written a little bit more clear, and maybe it's because it was written later. But, uh, as, but it, going back to this, the, the rules are the same for both for the, the types of categories. So we continue here, method one input. So we got ASME Section 8, Division 1, post 1999. We've got uh, SA 516, grade 70N, which is a normalized low temperature impact steel. And the nozzle is a, is, um, a low, low temperature impact steel with exemptions for the design. And so we're, we got a nozzle to head joint. We've got our thickness shown there, our nozzle outside diameter which is equivalent to a 10, uh, 10 inch pipe, extra strong, so it'd be half an inch. And we're gonna put a reinforcing pad on that and it'll, it'll match the thickness of the vessel, which is typically done. And um, it saves on materials as well, right? Because you, you, you a fabricator will prefer to do that. Um, and the corrosion allowance. Just set up the preliminary calculation. We'll make our our customary ad adjustments for the corrosion allowance. So, so the thick the thickness of the parts becomes um, you know a little bit thinner after you make those adjustments. So we make the adjustments to to the shell and to the nozzle and so on. Okay, so let's continue with getting down to the calculation. So we have the calculation UW16 minimum requirements for, for attachment opening, opening at openings, excuse me. The minimum throat thickness TC is what we're, we're focusing our, uh, our calculation on uh, for now, but there'll be a few other steps. So, so basically we go into the, um, we determine the, the the minimum thickness okay from the minimum of the nozzle the you know the the pads or point uh 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch we take the minimum of those and then we determine that 
our minimum thickness is is uh, three eighths of an inch. Next thing we do is we go ahead and we calculate the thickness of this cross section, just similar to what we did in the previous uh, exercise. Uh, when we're, we did the previous exercise, if you recall, we, we worked without a pad. So in this case, we have a pad. So we take we take the equation here and we say it's a minimum of a quarter of an inch or 0.7 times T min, which we determined up here. So then we determine that it's that's going to be a quarter of an inch. We take we correct for the for the uh, leg size, which is you know the exact is the square root of you know, um, and so basically we come up with 0.357 when we determine the nearest standard size in, in steps of eighth of an inch and is what we're I'm used to doing is you come up with a size of three eighths of an inch. Now the throat. We, we say it's going to be, you know, uh, 0.5 of the minimum of the, you know, of these variables, which is the shell and, you know, uh, and so on. And then we determine the area of the throat to be 0.25 inches. Okay. And, and then basically from that, we determined also the, we take the 0.7 of these variables here and we determine that TW is to be, you know, it's 0.7 T min TW, right? So we go ahead, it has to be greater than uh, 0.263. So that's basically the steps. It's all by formula. To the next one, method two, which is this section, eight division two alternative rules. Have a look. So we're going to follow uh, category, well, category for as described in 422 in the 2019. I think it's after 2013. They they changed the sections around, but basically we look at the kind of well we do, and and in um, alternative rules they have in addition to that table they also have a description. In this case, this most closely matches our requirements. It's a well, a category D weld, and and um, which is shown right here, just like the previous drawing. And let's continue on to the next step. So we continue to look at the joint types. They're very, very specific in alternative rules. You have to go to uh, table 422. And we, we look at the descriptions, and the one that most closely matches is a type 7 joint. So that's a corner joint made with full penetration welds or without fillet welds. In our case, we, we've, we use full penetration welds. And, and uh, whenever I worked with Division 2, we, al we always use full penetration welds. I mean, that's probably the most common way of doing it. Uh, with or with or without uh, fillet weld welds. Four two five five category D locations, and we have full penetration corner welds at the nozzle neck, which we determined last time. So, basically, that's the the category, uh, the subcategory of D that we follow. And then the next step is we look at that and we look down that list and it says some acceptable well pads, pad nozzle attachments and other connections to shells. So in the case, so this is sort of a recommended list where all the rules are can. And if you follow this, then there's less, fewer steps. And because uh, method two is all about designed by rules, we can't really use invoke the other requirements for for uh, for analysis. So this basically tells us how to move forward and what which charts to use. Very specific details. Down this list and look through the code again. I want to pay you to pay attention to to part four. Insert nozzle necks with reinforcement, and it says inserted. Type necks have added reinforcement in the form of one or more separate nozzle plates shall be attached by continuous welds at the outer edge. So, um, you know, 
the it has to be continuously welded at the, the nozzle neck and the periphery and uh, fatigue screening uh, that's not a requirement for um, this coat this this particular analysis but um, we need to have full penetration welds and basically we're looking at detail two is the one that we should be using for our analysis with our analysis so there's a statement about separate reinforcing pads may be used providing that you meet all of these requirements so the first one we'll talk about it says the nozzle materials of the nozzle pad or vessel shall conform with section 9 which is you know typical anyways and you need to have follow have the materials types 1 or 4 as shown in table 2.4.23 and in in the method 1 there there is no such um, specific requirement so let's take a look at that table so in our case we have uh, because we're using that 516 grade 70 plate where we fall under a type one material. So let's bounce back to this table. So we go back and take a look and we pass that requirement. Now let's take a look at the other requirements. So we're okay with that. And now we look at the yield stress, the specified yield stress of the nozzle pad shall not exceed that. So, you know, uh, 80 KSI, which is pretty easy. They don't want you to use high strength materials. So in our case, um, we're good. We're at uh, 38 KSI. And uh, the minimum elongation of the pad and nozzle material shall not exceed 12%. So in our case, we're, uh, it's, this is not applicable. Um, for our type of calculation, uh, which is the following in the division one. And the thickness of the added component does not exceed one and a half times the wall thickness. And, you know, we're one times the wall thickness. We've matched it, which is a rule of thumb for, for uh, anyways. And also um, for five, five is not applicable. So that talks about, you know, non-integral construction where cyclic services are, are met and, and um, the method two calculation, the, the, the requirements for fatigue are, are not required for um, a division one alternate method two analysis. So now we've we've pulled this all together. We've selected our table. We've looked at our materials. Now we can go and take a look. So we, we've selected detail two. Uh, it's a joint type seven, a category D. And now we follow these rules, except for the case of this radius. And we'll get at that into we'll go into that in a second here. We have, we're going to use the more conservative um, set of rules. So back into a table like what I usually do is I put it into a table so we've, we've we've got our joint categories we've selected that on the previous slide so we do you know the the calculations here so we the TC is calculated by formula and uh, and basically we have a quarter of an inch and then we make the adjustment for the fillet size and then we cho choose in that the clearest nearest size and we get uh, three-eighths of an inch and then we continue on to look to look for what they call TF1 which is shown um, you know here and that's just basically the F for fillet weld and they have a set of criterion you know 0.6 times you know the, um, the thick TE which is the thickness of the pad and then there's this, there is a shell uh, relationship as well. So those are all by rules of thumb. So basically we calculate that and that, and we end up with 4.38, which is the nearest standard size. And then um, we, we basically the dominant rules for that is section five, two, 
one e for the radius. So uh, for them, for them, there's a maximum requirement. It has to do with the fatigue. So um, ASME is kind of quiet about that. So I usually I just take a maximum, but the minimum is clearly stated in in the rules. So we use that, and by coincidence, that's the minimum anyway. So um, so we end up doing the calculation based upon these rules of thickness and and so on. We get an eighth of an inch as a minimum radius and the maximum of a quarter of an inch of radius. And and that's uh, has to do a lot with with uh, you know making the vessel less susceptible to fatigue type damage. And so uh, there's requirements in there, whereas you know ask me the the ASME Section 8 Division 1 rule, they just require you to get rid of the rough edges, but there's no, you know, specific. Because this this um, requirements for radius, that adds cost to the vessel. And so you should be aware of that when specifying that, that um, it may not be required and you're adding unnecessary cost to the vessel design and the work. And so, um, you know that's why one of the reasons why we we tend not to follow these division two rules because of the extra extra cost associated with tolerances and and another one here which is this inside radius. So let's take a look at our conclusions here for, during our um, our review. We looked at uh, Section 8 Division 1 does not require requirements for the inside radius R1 and you would refer to UW 16.1D and uh, UG 76 B and C exposed inner edges shall be rounded or chamfered and um, so it's not as rigid a requirement but if you want to review that in more detail just review to these sections and you can see that and um, Basically, you know, Division Two, as we stated early, has requirements, and it's not that straightforward. I found you have to sort of look in a couple spots to make sure you got all of the right answers. And and the when you do the fillet design for this particular example, the the, the answer was the same. So how much value is it doing the Division Two in this case? There's no there's no uh, advantage is just creating extra complexity to the design but you know in some cases you may um, find an advantage and it might be worth it I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you this was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions we'd love to hear your feedback and and your thoughts on further videos and we'd love to hear from you maybe we can do some business please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing take care for now